Today, I am watching Mark Nash as he talks about book covers. Yeah. Hi guys, Dane here and welcome to another Archive 5 video. So basically what this is, this is five tags in one video. I'm calling this the Stuff About Me episode. So I'm going to have the timestamps in the description below and also on the video here so you can skip in and see individual tags if you want to. But basically, because I have a backlog of unpublished tags, I thought I would group some of them together. Some of these are quite old as well, so, you know... It is what it is. So um, yeah, enjoy. We're gonna have, first up we're gonna have the TMI tag. Then we're gonna have the booktube about me tag. Then we've got the male booktuber tag. Then we have the anything but books tag. And then we have the rapid fire book tag. And basically these will all be back to back. It's gonna be so weird because you're gonna see me from about eight different times. Like you can watch me age in front of your eyes as you're watching these, but. But hey ho, hopefully you enjoy them. So yeah, without further ado, here is Past Dane doing the TMI tag. Hi folks, Dane here, and today I'm gonna take the TMI tag. So I have no idea who created this. I think it's been around quite a lot because it's not necessarily a booktube tag, it's just a general tag. Nevertheless, I was tagged by Todd the Librarian. Here is Todd tagging me. Question number 50, who should answer these questions? Now this is only if, if you Good people haven't done this, so I'm tagging Dane Cobain, Matilda Gothka, Zalata, Kayla for On the Fritz, Graham Quigley, and Cass at What Cass Read. And so I thought I'd take this. So there are 50 questions, so this could be a long one, so please bear with me here. I'll try and whiz through it, and at the end I'll tag a few people to take it next as well. So without further ado, let's get going. Question one, what are you wearing? I'm wearing a, my bright orange t-shirt. The, I think I got this from Matalan. It, I don't know. I don't even know what it's a t-shirt of, but it's bright orange, so I thought, why not? And I'm wearing jeans. Question two: Ever been in love? Yes. Question three: Ever had a terrible breakup? Yes. I feel like these should be um, these should be open-ended questions rather than yes or no questions. But equally, I don't really want to go into any detail on those. So, <laughs> question four: How tall are you? I'm about 5'9", five, 5'10", five, something like that. Question five, how much do you weigh? I weigh about 13 stone, about 100 and... Oh, actually, no, I don't know. I weigh, I weigh about 184 pounds, so how much, however much that is in stone. Question six, any tattoos? Yes, I've got two. I've got the vegetarian V symbol on my wrist, and then on my arm here, this is Jeff Buckley lyrics that says, my kingdom for a kiss upon her shoulder. Question seven, any piercings? No, I don't like piercings, they freak me out. Question eight, OTP. Bear with me, gotta double check what that means. A one true partnership, is it, or something like that? One true pairing, favorite combination of characters in a fandom. Will and Lyra from the His Dark Materials trilogy, only it didn't end up so well for them. It made me cry. <laughs> Question nine, favorite show. I don't watch too much TV. At the moment, I'm really loving Upstart Crow because it's David Mitchell playing a comedic version of William Shakespeare, which is great. Question 10, favorite bands? I actually like quite a lot of solo artists like Simon Joyner and stuff like that and Malcolm Middleton, who nobody will have ever heard of. Favorite bands, probably Beatles, Bright Eyes, Nirvana. Probably those are my top three. Those are definitely the top three in my listening history. Question 11, something you miss? It's kind of sad, the thing that strikes me at the moment is I never thought this was going to be a thing when I went freelance but I do kind of miss being in an office every now and then and having people around when I'm working. Question 12, favourite song? It really does depend. At the moment, the first, well the first thing that came into my head isn't what I would say is my favourite song and it's definitely not my favourite song of all time. But that is a song called Love That Grows Old by Max Jury. Question 13, how old are you? I'm 28. Question 14, zodiac sign. I'm a Gemini, and I think zodiac signs are a load of bo- Question 15, quality you look for in a partner. They just, I think for me, they just have to be a fundamentally nice person. They have to be, like, good. They have to be doing something good in the world. Where am I? Favorite quote. I used to have a Charles Bukowski quote on my desktop background. Find what you love and let it kill you. Favorite actor. I don't know if I even have one. David Tennant popped into my head, so we'll go for David Tennant, because he's pretty versatile. I've liked him in everything I've seen him in. Favourite colour? Red. Loud music or soft? Probably loud. <laughs> Question 20. Where do you go when you're sad? To the pub. 
Question 21. How long does it take you to shower? Like, five minutes. I'm a demon. Like, anything that I do, I try and do it as quickly as possible. I think I do that with videos as well. That's why I talk so quickly and why I talk so quickly right now, you see. But anyway. Uh, when I'm in the shower, I'm in the in the zone. I just straight in, straight out, sort myself out, do all the bits that need washing, and, you know, you sort it. Dry off. Get back to work. Question 22. How long does it take you to get ready in the morning? I literally wake up, roll out of bed, drag some clothes on, and just turn my computer on. In fact, my computer's usually on because I usually forget to turn it off. Question 23. Ever been in a physical fight? Not- well, yes actually. Yeah, there was one time I just got beat up. Basically, I was with this girl and we were both drunk and, um, yeah. Then she shouted at some abuse at some chavs and then they turned around and because she was a girl, they beat me up. And I didn't do anything and I didn't even try and stop them. I was trying to point out I was like, look, I didn't do anything. I, it wasn't me that Se and I think all she sh she just I can't remember what she said anyway I knew one of them as well it was really awkward he just didn't take part and just watched his mates beat me up for no reason question 24 turn on uh, it's really hard it's a very ethereal thing to try and define um, I don't know I think just certain people have like a glow about them not in some weird hippie you know uh, aura way but in the just when you, you know, some people are like larger than life and that is a huge turn on. Question 25, turn off. I don't know, like, just the usual stuff, like any kind of smell, any kind of unpleasant smell is a, <laughs> I think, I think that's universal. <laughs> Question 26, the reason I joined YouTube. Well, I actually joined YouTube in like 2006 because it was this hot new video platform that people were talking about. But um, the reason I'm making BookTube videos is because I want to be a part of the community. Because I watch BookTube a lot and I have been for years and I think it's time for me to, you know, be part of the conversation. Question 27, fears. I don't like the dark. <laughs> That's a fear of death as well, like, because I have anxiety disorder and it, it, for me it really focuses around my health. So. It, Every time I have an anxiety attack, it's me thinking, oh my god, I'm dying, I'm having a heart attack, and so, yeah, that's a pretty big fear. Question tw that got really real really quick, didn't it? Question 28, last thing that made you cry? It will have been this year at some point. I don't cry loads, I don't not cry, but I can't remember the last thing that made me cry. It was, I think I was probably drunk and um, emotional. Question 29, last time you said you loved someone? It was earlier this day, I said it to the cat. <laughs> Question 30, meaning behind your YouTube name. It's my name. Question 31, last book you read. Fuck. What was it? Oh, it was um, You Should Have Left by Daniel Kalman, and I thought it was good. I gave it a 4 out of 5 and filmed a review that probably isn't out yet. Question 32, the book you're currently reading. I left it through there, but I'm reading uh, The Moving Finger by Agatha Christie. It's a Miss Marple mystery, except I'm two-thirds of the way in and there's no sign of Miss Marple yet. Question 33, last show you watched. This was Upstart Crow on Netflix. Because I'd never heard of it because it's on the BBC and I don't pay a TV licence, so I can't watch BBC iPlayer. And then when BBC shows go on Netflix, I'm just all over them like a rash. Question 34, last person you talked to. Probably my girlfriend. I, I imagine I talked to her this morning when she woke up and left to work because I just fall back asleep and forget about it. Question 35, the relationship between you and the person last texted. Oh God. I don't, I can't say too much, but it's a client who gets me to kind of read and edit their master's dissertation. And she's just found out that she's pregnant. So she asked me if I can change the dates of her, her work, which kind of, I'm like, yeah, no problem. So yeah, congratulations client. Question 36, favorite food? Probably pizza, but I'm vegetarian as well. So Question 37, place you want to visit? America, I've never been. Question 38, last place you were? The bathroom? Question 39, do you have a crush? Yes. Question 40, last time you kissed someone? Again, probably this morning when I was half awake and don't remember it. It was that good. <laughs> Question 41, last time you were insulted? Um, I don't know actually. If people like troll me or whatever on social media, they don't tend to insult me, they tend to just disagree with me, which... It's fine, you know, I, I don't mind a healthy debate. Question 42, favorite flavor of sweet? I guess that's what we here in the UK just call sweets, like candy, confectionery. But uh, fizzy laces, strawberry fizzy laces. Question 43, what instruments do you play? 
I play a lot of instruments, but predominantly guitar and I sing. I'm going to actually do an instrument tour, so let me know if you want me to actually edit that, because I've filmed it and it's just sitting around. Question 44, favourite piece of jewellery? I don't really do jewellery, but I guess I'm going to... Can I have my Fitbit? Does that count? Question 45, last sport you played? Uh, <laughs> it would be five-a-side football in January, so like a year ago, pretty much. Question 46, last song you sang? This was probably one of my songs last time I played guitar, but I couldn't tell you offhand which one it was. Question 47, favourite chat-up line? My name's not Luna, but I sure know how to love good. Question 48, have you ever used it? No, I have not ever used it. <laughs> I don't use chat-up lines. I think people who do are weird. Question 49, last time you hung out with anyone? Actually, I can't really remember that because I do just spend a lot of time in my house. Last time I hung out with anyone. It might have been when I went to London for the Young Writer of the Year Awards and hung out with the panel there. Question 50, who should answer these questions next? So I tag, Kit Kats can read, he will say his books, and uh, bring the pugs as well please. Randomly bookish Gina. So there we go, that's the TMI tag. Thanks a lot to Todd for tagging me. Be sure to check out his video in the links below. And if you want to do this and I didn't tag you, just feel free to go ahead and do it. All the questions are in the description. In the meantime, feel free to leave a comment, hit subscribe, like, all that kind of stuff. And I will see you soon for another video later. Bye. <laughs> oh, I cocked that up, but we'll just keep this in. This is the ending now. Hi, folks, Dane here. And today I am going to take the BookTube About Me tag. So this was originally created by Harriet Rosie years ago, like years and years ago. So there are 10 questions to this tag. I'm going to answer those 10 questions and then I'm going to tag three people at the end. And please do excuse my hair for being floofy. I, I went for a shower, so it's very floofy. I need a haircut. Look at this. Bloody hell. But you know when a peacock or whatever like f spreads its wings to look intimidating? <laughs> Oh god, now I look like I was in a 90s boy band. Question one, what do you study slash what is your job? So I'm a freelance writer, so that basically means I'm self-employed. I write things mainly, a lot of stuff like blog posts and marketing materials and downloadable white papers and ebooks and all that kind of thing. I have ghostwritten a couple of books as well. Those are always fun ones because those are also long-term projects. And yeah, I've been self-employed like this for about... Only since June 2017, so before then I used to work in marketing and I guess that's where I learned the skills I kind of needed to go to go freelance. Question number two, what is your favourite social media channel? Probably YouTube. I mean, I don't know, everything else is a bit like a hassle, like Facebook, I'm only on it because I kind of have to be on it. Same with Twitter in terms of I have to kind of use it for me as my, my job and stuff. So YouTube is the only social network I think that I'm... You know, I mean, I use it as a major source of content. I watch YouTube videos all day. So, especially being self-employed, I can sit back. Look, I sit back like this. My keyboard on my lap. And there's a TV right behind the camera. So I can just sit. In fact, who have we got on at the moment? We've got Mindy's book journey on at the moment. Taking the clean slate tag. Listen. Personality and kind of put myself out there. I still want to work on those things. So, so so this is this is this is what I do. All right, we pause it now. So yeah, probably YouTube. It's definitely the one I probably spend the most time on. Everything else I tend to log in and back out of again. Question number three: If you had another channel, what would it be about? It would probably be about writing. I mean, I've always just used this channel, and throughout the years, I've done all kinds of stuff. When I was like 21 or something, I used to be doing Let's Play videos because that was the cool thing at the time, I guess. And um. But I never really engaged in the community, and so my channel's a weird one. You'll notice, I actually, I have my subscriber count hidden, and that's because I have, like, 800-odd subscribers, but this is from since 2006, so only about 20 of them actually watch my videos. And so I think it kind of looks weird if I've got, like, 900, 8, 900 subscribers and, like, 5 views. <laughs> so, <laughs> but yeah, if I did have another channel, it would probably be about writing updates and all that kind of stuff. Maybe I'd have another one for my music or something like that. But historically, I've just all put all my videos on this channel. Question four, do you play any instruments? Yeah, I kind of answered this with the last one when I talked about music. Yeah, I play guitar and I sing and I kind of try and blag my way around various other instruments as well, like keyboard and all this kind of stuff, just to play a few chords and whatnot. I have actually filmed an instrument tour, which I haven't edited yet, but I might edit at some point. It might already be up by the time this tag comes out. 
Question number five. What hobbies do you have other than reading? Again, writing and music are probably those two big other hobbies. Poetry, I do, I do stand-up poetry, but again, it all kind of falls under this whole umbrella. It's all interlinked, you know. Oh, I do do a little tiny bit of art. Like, I made my little booktube sign. I mean, it's not amazing. But I did do a video on that as well that showed some of my other, some of my other art. Question number six, favourite TV shows? Well, at the time of filming, I've recently finished watching Upstart Crow, and that was amazing. It's um, David Mitchell playing Shakespeare in like a comedy, written by Ben Elton as well, so it's a good old line-up there. But in general, favourite shows... Um, actually, I do like Mitchell and Webb as well. That's my go-to show for like, you know, if you can't get to sleep and you put a show on your phone or something. Mitchell and Webb, or Fry and Laurie, anything comedy like that. I watch a lot of documentaries as well. Obviously, things like Stranger Things is great. I got into The Walking Dead, seen up to season six. Game of Thrones. I've watched every episode of Prison Break. At one point, well, like years, this is years ago now, but I watched every episode of the CSI. So I'd done like CSI New York or whatever, and CSI Miami and CSI, all up to like season 11 or something. I get obsessed with seasons. Question number seven, what got you into reading? I don't know, I think my, my both of my parents are both big readers, so I always had access to books, and even as a kid, I mean, I always used to read in the back of cars, and I still read, like, if me and my girlfriend are going somewhere, I can't drive, so, like, when we went to Liverpool, it was, like, a four-hour drive, and I just read my book the entire time, and I think she hated me for it, but I got, like, 400 pages of Stephen King done or something. My grandma used to take books out of the library and make her own audio books, and she had a little bell that she'd ding. So she'd read the page and ding, so I knew to change the page and go to the next page. So I was always surrounded by books, and I just always loved reading. And I guess my love for it really got sparked when I was kind of a teenager, when I was maybe 14 or so, through a mixture of things like Harry Potter, obviously every kid in my generation, um, Northern Lights, and that whole trilogy, the His Dark Materials trilogy by Philip Pullman. Those, that's just, just my favourite books of all time, I think. And um, those are absolutely beautiful. And those really got me, gave me the bug. And then I guess I got into writing as well, so I just naturally got into reading more. Question number eight. What are your favourite and least favourite genres? I don't know if I have a least favourite per se, because I'll try and give everything a go once. I certainly think there are certain genres that fall very easily into cliché. And I'm sorry, Booktube, but YA is one of those genres. Um, romance is one of those genres. Erotica is one of those genres. To be fair, so is horror, but not so much. Sci-fi and fantasy, very much, definitely those genres. Like, you get, don't get me wrong, you get some epic fantasy in every sense of the word, but equally you get some absolute. But I think in terms of my favourite genres, I like beat poetry and like Charles Bukowski and that kind of stuff. I like 20th century classics, a lot of Graham Greene and Her Ernest Hemingway. Um, I like thrillers and crime as well. I like cozy detectives actually. I've even written some cozy detectives, but with a modern day twist. Question number nine, what books define your childhood? I kind of just answered this. It would be Harry Potter, Philip Pullman. Um, there are some others though actually. So Terry Pratchett would be a big one as well. Um, the, oh, there was a book called The Idiot Book by Captain Idiot. I haven't actually bothered to get these books out off of my shelves because to be honest, I only glanced at these questions. Question 10. Tell us an interesting fact about you. I know pi to about 40 odd decimal places. All right, watch. I'm going to close my eyes. I'm going to put it. I'm going to put pi down at the bottom of the screen so that you can see that I'm not making this up. All right, we're we good. All right. Let's cover myself my face. Actually, I could have it on the back. There we go. Here we go. It is 3.141592653589793238462643383279502 and then I stopped memorizing it after that that was the product of a misspent youth that was my year 11 maths class so thanks a lot for Harriet Rosie for creating this tag and just for just generally being a badass you should definitely check out her channel and I'm going to tag three people to take this next and I'm going to tag it will say his books and uh, bring the pugs as well, please. Catalyst Reads and Chrissy Books and Berries. And with that, my phone is also on low battery. So thanks a lot for watching. Don't forget to hit subscribe, leave a comment, all of that kind of stuff. And I will see you soon in another bookish video. Bye-bye.
Hi folks, Dane here, and today I'm going to be taking the male butttuber tag. Now, I actually took this tag not long ago, but I did it on my other channel. So today I'm going to do it here, and we'll see if my answers have changed. So this was created by JS Chaya, who then went travelling and closed down his booktube channel. But he is still on YouTube, so I'll try to remember to link to his new channel if possible. In the meantime, it's quite a short tag. There are only six questions, so I'm going to do those six questions, and then I'm going to tag some people at the end, even though I think these people have already done it. But what the hell? So, question one. Do you think there is a lack of male booktubers? If so, why? Now, I would have said definitely, especially a few months ago, but I've actually found a few more male booktubers recently, and I'm kind of a little bit going out of my way to find them, I guess. Um, I'm certainly probably more likely to subscribe to a male booktuber if I see one, just because my existing balance is probably maybe 80 to 90% female at the moment. There is a lack, uh, I think there is a lack of male booktubers, especially at the very top level of booktube. I think there was a video going around a little bit, a little while ago about that. As for why that is, it may just be that blokes are less likely to want a booktube, I guess. It's very unlikely you're going to find any topic where it's an exactly 50% split of male and female. And to be honest, it's not something that I put a great amount of thought into. Question number two, would you like to see more male booktubers and why? I guess I would like to see more male booktubers. I always think that, you know, in the same way that when you read books, you like to read about characters that you can identify with. You know, I, I, I like to see that in reviewers as well. And the fact that they're prejump, like, you know, most of the people I watch are American females. And so I would like to see more British males specifically, I think, just to get that extra point of view, I guess. But I would like to see more booktubers in general. So male, female, you know, non-binary, whatever. I don't care, just join booktube. Question number three, how do you think we as a community can attract more males to booktube? Again, I don't necessarily think that we have a responsibility to do this as a community. I think as long as we're welcoming to people, regardless of their gender, I think it will be at what it will be. I've certainly wondered that myself. I've been like, I don't know whether because I'm a male, whether that works against me, whether actually because I'm a male, maybe my reading habits are slightly different, so I might not read the same books as people. But then again, ultimately I'm doing this for myself to have fun, so you know, it doesn't matter too much. Question number four, do you think having more males on booktube will enhance the booktube experience? Having more people of an underrepresented, you know, set of the community, I think is beneficial anyway. So I think there are all kinds of areas. I would like to see more French booktubers, I was thinking recently. Never seen a French booktuber, so if you know of one, recommend one. But I would like to see booktubers of all different shapes and sizes from all over the world, rather than, I think at the moment, we have certain areas that are vastly overrepresented. So YA readers are much more represented than poetry readers, for example. Okay, question number five. Check the gender divide of your viewers in your analytics. I should point out as well, my analytics are vastly skewed because my most popular videos are like three videos from about 2008 or something that I don't even know the old, old content to. It's like old TV shows and stuff, but I keep it because it brings in viewers. Well, see, that's very interesting. So my viewership is 60% male and the most popular age groups are 25 to 34 and 35 to 44. Although what's even more interesting is that the most popular age and gender split of all is uh, female 25 to 34 and that's a third of my viewers. Question number six, name a few of your favorite male booktubers. So for this, I'm just gonna be lazy and do this as though I'm tagging them, even though I think they've done it, but I'm gonna tag three people anyway. So these people are Todd the Librarian, Catalyst Reads, Graham Quigley as well. So those are three of my favorite male booktubers. There are lots more that I watch. Uh, Joe from Final Blow Joe, for example. I think all the male booktubers have already done this because I think, I don't know, I've never talked to another male booktuber about this, you know, but I think we do maybe feel underrepresented, I guess. I know I certainly have felt like that in the past, although again, I, ugh, it doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter. As long as people are having fun, that's all that matters. If you are a male booktuber, or even if you're not a male booktuber, feel free to take the tag as well. If you haven't done it, go ahead and do it. And in the meantime, thanks a lot for watching. Don't forget to hit subscribe and leave a comment on what you think of all of this gender malarkey. And I'll see you soon for another video. Bye.
Hi guys, Dane here, and today I am doing the anything but books tag and showing off my very slight stubble because I haven't been asked to shave yet. My bad. <laughs> so this tag was created by Read or Rot and there are 10 questions which I'm going to answer and then I'm going to tag three people at the end. Now I appreciate this isn't really booktube related but it sort of is. It's sort of a booktube tag. The questions just aren't about books. Question one, name a cartoon that you love. So I'm going to be controversial here and say, like, not Rick and Morty. Rick and Morty's okay. I don't like Rick and Morty fans, so I've stopped watching Rick and Morty. Because <laughs> I didn't think it was that good to begin with, so I'm just, you know, I'm just keeping my head out of it. Um, I don't really watch cartoons, to be honest. When I looked at these questions, and I actually only glanced at this first question, but my initial thought was Scooby-Doo. That's all I can think of. Actually, Trapdoor. Trapdoor is good, but that's not actually an, a cartoon, really. It's a stop-motion animation. And, like, I like the Herbs and the Clangers, but those are puppets. So, I don't know. I don't know, man. I don't know. Question number two. What is your favourite song right now? One of my favourites of all time is First Day of My Life by Bright Eyes. So we're going to go with that. Question number three. What could you do for hours that isn't reading? Oh, Jesus. R writing, maybe? Even then, though, I need a break. I don't think there is something. Maybe just playing guitar and making music and recording and doing that kind of stuff. Editing videos, actually. I quite enjoy editing and I know a lot of people don't, but I do. Question number four, what is something you love to do that your followers would be surprised by? The best thing I can think of, the best answer here, is just to alphabetize things. I find it very soothing. Question number five, what is your favorite unnecessarily specific thing to learn about? I don't know if I would necessarily say that this is my favorite, but I've been learning a lot about factory farming. Uh, they're actually called concentrated animal feeding operations. That what, that's what the factory farming industry would like you to call it. So that's why we all call them factory farms, just to piss them off. Um, yeah, that's some research for a book that I'm writing and I wouldn't say I enjoy reading about it because it's really bleak and kind of quite unpleasant but I do find it very fascinating and it is just a very specific thing that I've been learning a lot about and you know how they keep the different animals and all that kind of things. Look up veal crates. Yeah, now don't eat veal. Question number six, what is something unusual you know how to do? I think I mentioned this in a previous tag that actually I probably haven't posted yet, but uh, I can do pi to about 40 decimal places. So it's like this. Are you ready? It goes 3.141592653589732384628327950288841. And then I don't know it after that. Question number seven. Name something you've made in the last year and show us if you can. That. Uh, there's a video actually that shows me making this. It's only a recent thing I've been doing is just getting kind of cheap canvases and using oil pastels and making things. I did a, a whole, like I said, I did a whole video that shows how I made that. I mean, it's, it literally took about 20 minutes while I was drunk, but also it shows off some of my other artwork as well. Question number eight, what is your most recent personal project? Well, at the time of filming, I'm specifically working on the first round of edits for book two in the Lightfold series. So you've probably heard me talk about Driven, which is my sort of modern quirky detective novel. And uh, the, the follow up to that is a book called Netflix and Kill. And I've had my first round of edits back from my editor, Pamelise Harris. So I've been going through and processing all of those edits and making changes and all that kind of stuff. And also identifying like little areas where I can add scenes and there are gonna be a few extra chapters, a few gonna be removed as well. So all that kind of thing. So yeah, actually the most recent personal project has been deleting 10,000 words of my manuscript. Thanks, Pam. <laughs> Question number nine, tell us something you think about often, maybe while staring out of windows. Um, I got one of the top comments on a Read by Zoe video recently because she was talking about space and how space scares her and space scares me as well. I have this particular fear of like the sun just exploding or of maybe all gravity just suddenly stopping working and we'd just lose the atmosphere and we'd have this like awful 90 seconds where we all know we're gonna die and we're just waiting for it. Have you seen the bit, in, I think, is it Total Recall where uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger's out on the surface of like Mars and his eyes are popping out of his skin? <laughs> Yeah, I think about that. This is why I never get any sleep. 
Question number 10. Give us something that's your favorite, but make it something oddly specific. Not like your favorite food, but like your favorite food when you've been studying for hours and forgot to eat. Or, you know, something like that. That was an oddly specific question. Okay, we're gonna go for something that I just spotted lying on my floor. And it's my favorite food that leaves me feeling disgusting afterwards because of the way it coats your fingers and you have to wash it off. And then your hands never feel clean afterwards. But it tastes so damn good. And that are these salt and vinegar. Bleh, can't say it. I had a, did, what just happened there? Salt and vinegar. These are salt and vinegar flavored sticks. Question number 11. Lastly, Say the first thing that pops into your head. Oh, the first one was not YouTube friendly. Sweden. Don't know why. Don't know why at all. And so those are the questions done. There are actually 11. I lied to you at the start of this video. Sorry about that. And now I'm going to tag three people. So I'm going to tag Todd the Librarian, Catalyst Reads, and Hannah Tay. So, thanks a lot for watching this non-bookish video. I'm not really sure why I filmed this now, but I've got the footage, so I might as well edit it. And this will do nicely for a Tag Tuesday. Anyway, on that note, thanks a lot for watching. Don't forget to hit subscribe. Feel free to leave a comment if you would like to. And I will see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye. Hi folks, Dane here, and today I'm going to take the rapid fire book tag. So as the title suggests, it's a series of questions. I'll try to answer them as quickly as possible. Due to the nature of this video, I haven't gone around and got books from my shelves and stuff like that. But I have just glanced at the questions and there are one or two that I may want to run around and, and get just if they're easy for me to get hold of, I guess. So there are a bunch of questions here. I'm going to rattle through all the questions and then at the end, I'm going to tag three people. This tag was created by Girl Reading. Unfortunately, I don't think the original video is still on her channel, so I can't link to that, unfortunately. But shout out to Girl Reading anyway for creating this. And without further ado, let's go. Ebook or physical book? Physical book, easy. Paperback or hardback? Paperback. Online or in store book shopping? Online, it's a lot cheaper. Trilogies or series? I'm saying trilogies because they have fewer books than series usually. Heroes or villains? Villains, because I love a bad guy. A book you want everyone to read? I'm just going to go for The Lucky Ones by Julianne Pacheco, which was one of the Young Writer Awards books. Purely because it's nearby and it was also very good. Recommend an underrated book? For this one, I'm going to go for Formally by Dane Cobain because, you know, everyone should read my book and I have to promo it where applicable. The last book you finished, that was a book of, ah, oh, I've forgotten what it was called. It was a book of poetry that was edited by William Seacart and it was uh, the four, 100 poems from the uh, Forward Awards book winners. The last book you bought, this isn't technically a book. I don't know, do you count this as a book? This is issues two, five, and eight of American Gods by Neil Gaiman. Gaiman, I never say his name right. So I guess that counts as books, right? I got it from a bookshop, so. <laughs> Weirdest thing you've used as a bookmark? Receipts, um, Rizzler, I've used that before. Um, yeah, like sweet wrappers and crisp packets. I've used another book as a bookmark. Used books, yes or no? Hell yeah. Top three favorite genres, um, 20th century classics, <laughs> poetry maybe, I don't know, literary fiction, 20th century classics, and crime and detective novels. Borrow or buy? Buy, and I also never lend books, I keep all of my books. Characters or plot? Well, you need both, but characters, I guess. If, the, if I don't like the characters, I don't really care what happens to them. Long or short books? Again, it depends what mood you're in, but long. I'm saying long right now, I have no idea why. <laughs> long or short chapters? I'm gonna say short. Let's have a long book with short chapters. Name the first three books you think of. Misery by Stephen King. 10 Miles One Way by Patrick Downs, because I've got Madman Reads and Rocks on the screen there, reviewing it, it's paused. So <laughs> that one was pretty obvious. And the Bible, for some reason, the Bible came to mind. Books that make you laugh or cry. Anything by Terry Pratchett makes me laugh. And the only book that's ever made me cry was The Amber Spyglass by Philip Pullman. The ending of that, man. Jesus. Our world or fictional worlds? Fictional worlds. I think that's why I read books. Audiobooks, yes or no? 
yeah, why not? I like audiobooks. I'll listen to them. Do you ever judge a book by its cover? Yes, especially indie books, because if they haven't hired a decent cover designer, they probably haven't hired a decent editor. Book to movie or book to TV adaptations? Yes. I don't I don't actually know the question. Do I have to choose do I choose between the two of them? I guess book to well, book to TV was my instinct there. I don't know why. A movie or TV show you prefer to its book? The Shining. Straight away. Um, the Shining was the first Stephen King novel I ever read, and I didn't like it much. And it was a while before I then looped back round to him and then really got hooked. So I've always preferred The Shining, the movie, to the book. Series or standalones? Based purely on what I read the most, I'm going to say standalones. So there we go, those are the questions. Might as well keep up the rapid fire theme here. So I tag what Cass read, Catalyst reads, and Chrissy Books and Berries. Thanks a lot for watching. Let's hope I can edit this to maybe three or four minutes. That'd be cool. I always like videos that are less than five minutes. It makes me happy. Now I'm just wasting time by talking though. So thanks a lot for watching. Don't forget to leave a comment, rate the video, subscribe, do all of that kind of stuff. And I'll see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye.